Brother and lads, welcome back to Cost Sustainable Podcast. My name is Cost. Say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in other parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. We're going to be diving into the latest around Arsenal. We are looking at a striker, and Mikel Arteta is, has drawn up a short list of strikers that we will be looking at from now until the end of the summer. Now, there is a possibility that we sign a forward. There is a possibility that we sign an all round player who can play on the right, on the left, and also as a striker. But we are really interested in signing in number nine. There are a couple of names that I'm looking at here, including uh, Medita Remy at FC Porto, including Lautaro Martinez and Duzan Vlahovic. All players that Arsenal would love to sign should we get players out of the door and get that cash in. Hit the like button, subscribe to the podcast as well. One more signing uh, on that forward line and who should that be? In the comment box below, let me know. One more signing on that forward line. Who should that be? Is it Javi Simons? Is it Elie Wahi? Is it Duzan Blahovic? Is it Lotaro Martinez? Or is it Mehdi Taremi? Five players Mikelata is looking at to try and sign at least one of them to bolster our striking options. Hit the like button. Let's get this video to 500 likes. Now, right, let's start off with the Mediterranean at FC Porto. Is the player that um, uh, was linked with Arsenal in January uh, following the injury of Gabriel Jesus. Of course, the deal did not materialize, but it's one player that gave us a very good um, indication of how, we, of how good he is and his ability um, at the World Cup. Actually, I think the World Cup was more of a, a highlight about his career and about his game. He scored very beautiful goals for Iran uh, in the, um, you know, at, at the World Cup. FC Porto would love to sell him. Roma are also looking at him as well. Arsenal are in the mix to sign him. Now, he's 30 years of age and he would be costing Arsenal uh, around 10 million euros to around 20 or 30 million euros. Uh, that is what we expect. That is his uh, price market, uh, market price according to... Um, uh, transfermarket.com and what i think about mediterranean is he's a player that michelata would sign one not to challenge gabriel Jesus to that starting 11 i don't think uh you sign a 30 year old striker to replace your uh, 26 or 25 year old striker so he won't be starting every game he is, he's not a striker that uh, would come in and ask them to start every game but he is a player that i reckon you sign him for instances where Gabriel Jesus picks up an injury, for instances where you want something different uh, from Gabriel Jesus, because with Mediterremi, you have a box striker, you have a striker who's very good in the air, and you also have a player who's very, very good as a target man. Now, very different profile from Gabriel Jesus. We've already talked about it, uh, you know, time and time again, that the likelihood and the likeliness between... Um, uh, uh, b between the two strikers we have in Edin Ketia and uh, Gabriel Jesus does not actually work very, very well. The times when we you, you need a target man, the times the times when we need a box striker, we are times we are times when we need to go up in the air um, to fight for those balls in the penalty area. And Gabriel Jesus cannot do that. Ed is not bad in the air, but you cannot really say that Ed is going to fight with the likes of Dan Ban and Lewis Dunk in the air as well. Okay, so in my opinion, Mediterranean would be such a very good. Uh, uh, deal for us no one that could only cost us l less than 30 million euros number one but it's not a long term deal literally it means that you can ship him off next summer and buy your Duzan Blahovic and buy your Victor Simen um, if you have the budget and the money and the funds to actually go for such a bigger signing. So for me, Mediterranean, now that Arsenal might not want to spend huge amounts of money, huge chunks of cash. Um, on a striker, probably he's a very good shot. Like proven goal scorer in his last two seasons at FC Porto, he's been hitting double figures, 15 and 17 respectively. Um, you know, in the league. So I think it's a it's a striker that um intrigues me, and I would be very, very interested to see how this one goes down. Now, he might not be one of those strikers that uh will bring a massive impact, like Arling Haaland, he's not that kind of guy, but he's the kind of guy that will score for you 10 goals of the bench and 10 important games i think he's, he can be game changer he can also decide very very tight games and very important games for example uh, the game we played against brentford and the game we played against everton at the goodson park last campaign if we had a target man like um Mediterranean, we could have had a very different result 
in my opinion. So Medita Remy are linked with Aston Mikelatit and looking at him since January. The next one is of course the big man Lutaro Martinez. We've looked we've talked about Lutaro Martinez for quite some time on this channel. Like I don't know why his picture is down there, but you can see. Now when we talk about prime and we talk about experience and we talk about 25 goals per season and we talk about what has the need to challenge Manchester City at the top level um, at, at the topmost level It's Lautaro Martinez, right? Like we have the most Creative midfielder in Martin Odegaard. We have the best defensive midfielder in Declan Rice and we have a goal-scoring midfielder in Kai Havers as well Saka is a, cre a creator. Martinelli is a creator as well as a goal scorer You just need a guy who can put balls in in the back of the net and that guy um for me is lataro martinez just to put this into perspective lataro martinez has scored 21 goals in each of his last two seasons at inter milan yes maybe did not have a very good performance uh, for them against manchester city in the ucl final but city are always city right uh we will give him the benefit of the doubt if Arsenal are looking to really recruit a huge striker, if you're looking to really recruit um, a number nine that will change our game, change our team, and massively increase the number of goals we are scoring, uh, Letaro Martinez would be a very, very good one. And I think with Letaro Martinez, and what I've seen about him, is he's not a selfish target man. So he's not your Gian Lucas Kamaka. He's not your um, Andy Caro. He will drop back. He has the hard work of the ball and he will allow other players to get into goal scoring opportunities and he's a creator as well. So for me, Lutaro Martinez on this list is a player that would actually fit into Mikel Arteta's system very, very well. But that means that he has to replace Gabriel Jesus. Now, I don't think Jesus is going to be replaced at Arsenal. I think the guarantees that he was given at Arsenal by Mikel Arteta before joining was... You come at you come into the team as my number nine. You will be a starter, and no one will start ahead of you um, unless otherwise, unless you've picked up an injury, unless you're not fit or things like that. But apart from that, you will be a, you know, a, a natural starter. So that is where Letaro Martinez and the deal doesn't make any sense. I don't think um, I think Inter are willing to sell. You know, they have that they have that um, financial um, you know problem they're nursing i think it has led them to sell marcelo brozovic this summer uh and i think they will replace him with fratesi which is actually a very very good deal um i, I, I could I, I can see them sell at least one more player in Milan. that could be andre onana the goalkeeper or that could be uh, Lautaro martinez as well the captain but Lutaro Martinez for 40 or 60 million euros, 40, 40 million euros rising to 60 million euros. That is what I, ex uh, I expect them to be asking for um, Inter Milan. That would be a very good deal for Arsenal as well. But it's a difficult one. Like when we talk about difficulty, it's one that is really, really difficult. Now, the next one is not difficult, but it's one where, that, um, it's, it's one where uh, Arsenal would have to decide whether um, the humiliation that uh, we faced in 2022 january uh is uh it was too huge or we can actually overcome it Dusan blahovic is another name that has been linked with arsenal all summer i mean with strikers it has been very very slow it has been very quiet and actually after arsenal sign after arsenal signing midfielders is when we hear that arsenal are really now interested uh in signing a striker now Dusan blahovic is a player who has had his high low and he's looking for that high again. Only 23 years of age, fits into the age profile of Arsenal Football Club. He's a goal scorer. He's a very different profile of a striker to what we have already. And it would be a massive upgrade and massive improvement to what Arsenal have. Like Duzan Blahovic is the modern day striker. He's got the ability to drop into that midfield um, and create a lot of havoc and create a lot of, uh, you know, problems. He's a pressing monster. He's a huge striker, good in the air, very good left foot, very good right foot as well. He's a very good sprint, splinter uh, or sprinter, depending on, 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 on how they say it. Uh, but I mean, good runner, right? And then one thing I like about him as well is a very precise finisher. Like he doesn't take a lot of time. Whenever he gets the ball, whenever the ball drops onto his feet, he's thinking 
how do I drop this into the back of the net? I think Dusan Blahovic, with all honesty, he is a 30 gold machine per season if he finds the right project. Now, it's a little bit unlucky that he has signed for Juventus at a time when Juve were declining, at a time when Juve uh, were actually going down rather than on their up. If he had signed for Juventus during that time where they went, they won like eight or nine consecutive uh, Serie A titles, this guy would have been one of the best strikers in the world. And he's still got, he's still got the potential. He's only 20. Um, he's got very many goals for Fiorentina during his time there. And then he can, he's come to Juve. And injuries have been a problem. Uh, the system has also been a problem. And the general mood and um, atmosphere at Juventus also has affected him very, very much. But if I still want to sign him, it's one that will work. Like, I don't see Dusan Blahovic go to any team. Bayern... Uh, you know Madrid, uh, Man City. I don't see him to go to go to any other team, and it doesn't work out. Like he's such a quality player. He's got so many attributes that, like, you would need to combine three players to get the attributes this guy has at 23. Like, I think his pressing is at the levels of Gabriel Jesus. His finishing is at the levels of Erling Haaland, and. Um, his hold-up play, like not pressing, uh, but hold-up play, being a target man, is at the levels of Mikel Antonio. So you, you, I'm not saying it's a combination of those three. Like that would be really exaggerated. I mean, he's a three-in-one guy. Like he can do a lot on and off the ball. And maybe if look, as Arsenal look for a 25 goal man, that is the guy. Like that is the guy. 25 goal man, Dzan Vlahovic. I reckon if he comes to the Premier League, within the first 20 games, he has already scored 15. Like, I really, really do reckon that. So, um, we will see if Mikel Arteta is really interested in Zan Blahovic and how serious we are. Because it's a deal that has so many suitors, but no one is serious. And, like, I don't understand how Man United have not seriously gone for Dusan Blahovic. I don't understand how Bayern have not seriously pushed to sign Dusan Blahovic. I've not understood why, you know, Madrid, after losing Karim Benzema, have not gone Blahovic for 40 million euros or 50 million euros. Come here, son. You're going to be the next Karim Benzema because he's got the ability to really become that. But Dusan Blahovic is player number three on this list, uh, linked with Arsenal. As we search for a striker towards the back end of the summer. Number four is Elie Wahi at Montpellier. The French international uh, is a very, very mouth-watering prospect uh, this summer. He's one of the players that Mikel Arteta uh, and Edu are looking at as well. Now, Elie Wahi has not had very big breakthrough seasons or very big successful seasons. But he has had two quality seasons at Montpellier. The good thing with Elia Wahi and the deal is that it wouldn't cost Arsenal a lot of money. So we are talking maybe Arsenal spending around 20 to 35 million euros um, you know, in that region, in that range uh, on Elia Wahi. And it's also a player that I think if Arsenal signed, he wouldn't put much pressure on Gabriel Jesus and Mikelata in terms of selection. And he would be happy to take on that um, role of Eddie Nketiah. Eddie thinks that um, it's time for him to go to a Premier League club and, you know, play every single minute. I agree with Eddie. He's been here for quite a very long time. He's proven that he can score goals in the Premier League. He's proven that he can score goals against the likes of Man United, against the likes of... Um, you know, West Ham, against some of the big sides in the Premier League. So I think Eddie will feel, how about I go and start my career at a club like West Ham, at a club where I will feel appreciated. Elie Wahi is the right guy to come in and replace um, Eddie Nketiah. He's going to be cheap. I don't think he's that frightening of a talent to go. I have to play every single minute. And he's got the ability to give you um, a replica of Gabriel Jesus. He's one of the strikers that resembles really Nicholas Jackson actually his profile and the profile of Nicholas Jackson is very very similar like when you see them play it's 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 hard to tell their strikers like they're not box to box strikers they're running around they are you know creating chances they are on the left flank they're on the right flank and that is the good thing about him I think um Mikel Atta has just made it very clear that position of versatility is something that will be key to a player to sign for Arsenal. Like, if you're good, and you're really good, 
and you cannot play in one or three uh, sorry you cannot play in two or three uh, positions or even more than that you're not a fit for Arsenal Football Club so Elia Wahi here ticks all the boxes in terms of position of versatility he's very young as well his resale value is high and his um and his um uh, uh, ceiling is also very high as well. So if Arsenal signed him for around 15 million euros, in the next three years we could sell him for around 30 or even 35 or even 50 million euros, uh, depending on his development. Right? I don't think. So. I, I think with Elia Wahi, it cannot go wrong. That is one of the good uh, good ones. It cannot go wrong. You sign him, right? Uh, you sign him, it, it works out. You could sell him for a, a high fee. You sign him, it works out, you keep him for a very long period of time. You sign him, it doesn't work out, you can still recoup your money back with a profit as well because it's not going to be, a sign, it's not going to be um, an expensive signing at all. But talking about cheap signings and talking about players that won't be expensive uh, in this summer, this guy, this man, um, Javi Simon. Now, Javi Simons, uh, again, we've talked about position of versatility. He's highly positionally versatile. Like, he's really, really, really positionally versatile. And uh, last season, top scorer in the Dutch LDVZ. Now, I don't see him as um, a striker, really. But when I look at him at times, I get the vibes of Gabriel Jesus. He's that kind of guy that can play in that false nine, and he will score for you goals. He's a good runner. His, balls, his runs off the ball are absolutely very, very good. Um, and his passing accuracy and shooting accuracy is also very good as well. Guess what? This guy could be available for less than 10 million euros. Can you imagine um, the, the top scorer in the Dutch LDVZ last season could be available for less, than, for less than 10 million euros? So if Arsenal just looking to add quality and depth to that forward line, Javi Simons, only 20 years of age, would be such a very, very nice shout. Those are the strikers we are looking at. What are your thoughts and your opinions in the comment box below?